What's up, what's up, and welcome to another episode, Master Modes Film Session. And today, we gotta talk about the young boy, Alex Highsmith. Now, before we get started, if you haven't subscribed just yet, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button as well while you're at it. But we gotta talk Alex Highsmith, man. A lot of people are excited about him. I'm excited about him as well. But people wanna know, man, can he be for the Steelers defense, what Bud Dupree was, right? The the wingman to TJ Watt. Can he come out here and produce on that type of level? Now, I definitely think he has the potential to grow into that. But more importantly, man, we're going to point to the things that he's doing right now that I definitely think is going to have a really, really significant impact on this team next year. So, bear with me while we go on this journey. <laughs> So right here, man, we're just gonna highlight a little bit of Alex Highsmith's rushes, right? So this is him at the uh, at the right outside linebacker spot. Play it in full speed, and after that, we'll break it down. All right. So <clears throat> just from the uh, from the wide angle. Just see him, like I said, this is their base, the Steelers' base defense. You see the three down D linemen, one, two, three, four outside linebackers, right? And for Alex Highsmith right now, he's simply just in a ghost, uh, ghost six, ghost seven technique because there's no tight end there. Obviously, your DN is head up to this tackle right there, all right? But um, the thing that I like about this play is, number one, it's run action at him. So he's showing, first off, his play recognition ability, right? A lot of times, man, when you get younger guys and you're putting them out there on first and second down, they struggle because they're thinking about too much. They're thinking about their coverage responsibilities. They're thinking about their run gap responsibilities. They're thinking about the defensive call as a whole and not playing ball. You know, but right here, you see Alex from the start of this thing, right? You got a little bit of pre-snap communication, I believe. It should be a little, yeah, just a little chatter right here. I think he's talking to uh, between Mink and Avery. But as a whole, man, like I said, this is run action at him. Love the inside hands right here. He gets to the steering wheel first. The steering wheel is what? The inside numbers, right? The right and left number on that tackle's jersey. Obviously, Alex Highsmith's hands are inside, so now he's in control of this, uh, of this blocker. And you can see him not just getting inside hands and being satisfied with that. No, he gets the inside hands, and he continues to attack. And now once he recognizes it is a uh, pass, starts to work half the man he starts to convert that thing and that's a big component right there yeah but as a whole i love the get off right here i mean just watch him he's literally one of the first guys off the ball as soon as this thing snaps man great anticipation ball key and then from there like i said man went in the line of scrimmage get across the line of scrimmage but understand gap integrity right because he doesn't know if it's run or pass right now he's doing what you're what is called settling right so once you get across the line of scrimmage you want to settle about one yard um, in the backfield because if you go too far you're going to create natural seams between uh, Between obviously high smith and the tackle and cam hayward and it'll be a natural running lane for this guy To be able to go in there or in there, right? But what high smith does is he settles it right here, right? Which is supposed to do and then from there now you're gonna work this half a man I love the violent arms though keeping the arms active then from there get skinny bend the corner get you a hit on the quarterback Excellent job on the finish, man. Thought this was a really good play by him. We'll see it again from the uh, end zone copy right here. But really good job by Highsmith, man, in terms of his play recognition, his fundamentals, and it converted. Just get around the corner. Let's go. Bend the corner. I'm here to see you bend that corner, baby. Huh. Get after him. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Right there again, though. Half a man. Uh. You see the dip of the shoulder? Then sky to rip, right? You want to get that hand above the eyes. That's going to free you up. And from there, you close in on it. But that's how it's supposed to look right there, man. That is high-quality ball from an edge rusher. A young guy, man, you know, still making his first couple of starts right here in this game. But really good job by him, man. Really good job. All right, now we're going to talk about Alex Highsmith and one of his inside rushes from this game as well. Now, we know Alex Highsmith has his patented spin move, and I love it. We're going to get to that as well later in this clip or later in this um in this video. But this play right here, man, just shows him once again, just, you know, 
being confident in who he is as a player, being confident in the moves that he wants to use, having a rush plan and executing it. So here we go right here. We'll play it in full speed. After that, we'll break it down. And that's Highsmith right there at the uh, right DN spot. All right, now I wanted to basically play it from the uh, from the wide side just so you can see how he impacts the throw on that play right there. You obviously see him with the inside rush, get the hit on Phillip, force him to throw the ball, you know, a little bit sooner than he would like. But we're really going to see it as best as we want to see it right here from this tight copy. Now, this is a third down play right here, so they're already in their sub package ball, which is why you only see the four down linemen, right? And obviously, with Alex Highsmith, anytime they got into the sub package ball, a lot of times he's going down to that three-point stance, right? You see TJ doing a similar uh, doing a similar thing as well. So here we go right here. But the thing that I like about Highsmith right here is, number one, he says, okay, I'm going to go inside. And that's fine. But if you're going to do it, you got to do it the right way, which he does. He doesn't go one step and go inside. Why? Because if you do this right now, this tackle is going to wash you down. And now, even though Phillip Rivers isn't the most mobile quarterback, he can still step outside of this. And now he, number one, has a perfect throwing lane to wherever he wants to go, right? Whether it's that way, that way. But also, it doesn't, like I said, impact you right here because it's Phillip Rivers. But versus your more mobile quarterbacks, that's a rushing lane now because he would be inside here. So very important that you understand that as a young rusher or a rusher at any level, if you're going to go inside, you need to either go inside at the quarterback's level, meaning you take it up Phil, you know, three, four yards. Or if you go inside now, you got to get back vertical to ultimately keep that guy boxed in, all right? But Alex Dusty takes it up Phil a little bit, right? A couple yards. Now he has this guy set up. Now he has his tackle with his shoulders more square to the sideline, meaning looking like this in terms of a box, right? Versus looking like that, which is more square and flat, okay? But that was more so because Alex was able to get this guy pushed up the field. Now that he comes inside, I love the arm action, but what does he have to do? Get back vertical. Now, like I said, it works out because Phillip Rivers isn't the most mobile. And we'll give the young guy credit, you know, benefit of the doubt. We'll say, hey, great film study. He knew this is a mobile court. Not a, he knew this wasn't a mobile quarterback, so he could take a little bit more chances. But just know, okay, versus a more mobile guy, this could be dangerous. That's a lot of space to cover. And obviously, you'll be looking at this D lineman or Minka having to come out of the you know middle of the field to come get that play, to make that play right there. So just got to be careful with it. But as a whole, I love how he, number one, once he does decide to go inside, he gets back vertical to get that finish and ultimately influence this throw right here. But really good fundamentals, though. Like I said, off the break, taking it up, field, a couple yards, one step, two step, three, boom. You see that outside hand that just it literally just smacked this elbow. This is what you want right here, man. Attacking that on. Bam. And now from there. I like the finish right there, man, with the arm over. And that's how you get out there right there, man. But really good job by him. Like I said, when he has a rush plan like that, he didn't he didn't have, he didn't have some really good rushes. It doesn't matter which tackle he's faced, you know. Obviously, you can point to the Bills game. You can point to the multiple Brown games that he's played against. We know, you know, the, the offensive lineman that he was facing in those games still was impactful, though, at times. When he knows what he wants to do and he's committed to it, looks really good. Now, obviously, because he's a younger guy, he does have plays where he's thinking a little bit. And that's been, you know, one of the things that has slowed him down some. But as a whole, I think he's progressing right in the right way, man. I'm really excited about him, man. All right, so now we're going to talk about Alex Highsmith in that inside spin move that we've been hearing about, that we've all seen flashes of and glimpses of. This is bread and butter. This is one of his best rush moves, and I love it because it's set up off of what he already does well in terms of his speed rush because he has a really good get off. He's really twitchy and bursty coming out of his stance, and this just you know goes right into that. And as a pass rusher, you want to have you know two to three moves that will all look similar in terms of their setup. But it's one little thing that's different in terms of how you execute them. Speed rush to uh, outside hand knockdown to a spin move. You want to just have all your moves looking the same because as a offensive lineman, 
you don't want him to be able to know as soon as you come out your stance, oh, this guy's going inside or this guy's working a, 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 a double hand side scissors. You know, you want to make sure that all of it looks the same so that way they can't have a tip on you. But right here, man, Alex does just that, man. And, and um, just, no, it's a really good rush by him. Now, obviously, he doesn't get the sack here. But like I said, but we're going to talk about this play. So here we go, full speed. And after that, we'll break this thing down. And also, while you're watching in the full speed, man, hit that subscribe button if you have it. <sighs> All right, here we go. Here we go. So we already highlighted that Alex Highsmith is at the uh, right DN spot again, right? Now, obviously, this game, TJ Watt didn't play. It was in week 17. So he's opposite of, uh, he was playing with Jerome Elliott and, uh, what was it? Um, uh, man, who else? Oh, Ola. Ola Danny was out there with him. Yeah, I was like, who else? But there we go. So. Like I said, this time still predominantly on the right side in this game, but once again, it's a top 10, top, yeah, top 10 uh, left tackle right here in Jedrick Wills in terms of his draft position. But watch the young guy work, man. I mean, I love the spin move, baby. I love it. We're going to see it a lot better from this, uh, from this end zone copy. A couple things that I would critique, though, right off the jump, get set. <laughs> Obviously, you know, this is one of the games where he's playing a lot more, right? And we said, man, when you're out there a lot more, it could be a little bit different on you. Obviously, physically, it's going to be a little bit more taxing, right? He definitely got a little bit winded, you know, once he became the story, once Bud went down compared to his typical just coming in and spot, you know, coming in in, in, in different situational ball. You know, you still get your 20 to 30 snaps, but it was a controlled situation for him, so he never had to get winded. Obviously, he was starting to get that a little bit more. And some of his bad plays happened when he was trying to catch his breath pre-snap like he is right here. But I do love how even though he wasn't fully set, he still was able to do what, man? In terms of rushing the passer, you got your basic principles, right? You got to have get off. So even though he's not set the way he would like to be set, still is set enough <laughs> to get this get off going. Like I said, basic pass rush principles. Get off the ball. Which is what he does, right? You got to get off that ball. And what I mean by that, your first two to three steps, you want to beat this tackle to this spot or at least make this tackle feel like you're going to beat him to this spot and ultimately make him have to play a lot faster than he's more comfortable doing and things like that. But as a whole, I really like this rush right here. Like I said, even though he wasn't all the way set, flows like water right off of that spin move. You see it, right? As soon as, as, soon as this tackle shoots his arms out at him, he reads off of it, and then from there, man, just beautiful job going through the fundamentals of a spin move in terms of taking the guy up the field, stabbing him in the back with the elbow, a la Dwight Freeney, right? That was one of his big staples with his spin move, right? Let's speed it up a little bit for you get to the spot. Oh, went a little too far. Wait a minute now. Hold on. There we go. But right here, the setup, the spin, uh, that's, that's the elbow that stabs you in the back, the ice pick right here. Okay, now let's get vertical. And right now, like I said, on the 10 yard line, okay, cool. It's not a QB hit. It's a cool little pressure. But that's because it's on the 10 yard line. It's a lot more condensed in terms of the field. The ball has to come out a lot faster. But when this ball is moved back now 20 yards, when it's on the 30 yard line, it's at midfield, this is a QB hit. This is a borderline sack right here because of the move. And it all starts with what? His get off. And then from there, just understanding his rush. Man, understanding that, okay, I'm going to go with the spin move. Well, let me make sure I take this tackle upfield. Make sure I stab him in the back with this elbow. And then from there, get back vertical. He does all those things right here. Really good job by the young guy, though, man. Really good job, man. You can see this is one of his favorite moves. He works on it a lot, and it comes very natural to him as well. Okay, now this play, I want to talk about Alex Highsmith playing in a seven technique and just showing, you know, his ability to play the run. We know as outside linebackers, we all get enamored with what? Rushing the passer, getting sacks. But in Pittsburgh, you got to be able to play the run. That's one of the staples here defensively. And Alex, man, when he decides, he could be really good at this thing, man. So I played him full speed after that. I'll break it down. Here's the young fella right there, though. Mm -hmm. All right, so 
basic technique, amazing a seven technique, just basically meaning he's inside eye of this uh of this tight end right here. That's all that means. You know, six technique, like I said, is more head up. Nine technique is when you're outside. There isn't an eight technique that I'm aware of just yet. So with that being said, his uh, responsibility though is the C gap. And the C gap is just this area right here between the tackle and the tight end, okay? But the beauty is this, man. Heavy hands. So you see, initially makes contact. It's a stalemate, right? We're right where the line of scrimmage is. But as the play progresses, he starts to win the grass. And now from there, with those aggressive, violent, heavy hands, now he's not just satisfied with just being blocked. He's not just satisfied with being in his gap. This is the mentality uh, element that I really like about him. He says, okay, I've won my gap. Ball can't get outside of me. Even though he's not worried about the ball getting outside, that's not his responsibility. That's the safety right here, okay? But... He knows that, hey, man, he can't run this ball in this C gap. But not just, you know, it's not enough just being in your gap. Now go make a play. Go be a playmaker. And that's what he does right here. Controls the blocker. Gets off. Big time tackle right there. And we know what type of running back Nick Chubb is. We know he's capable of. But as a whole, man, I love Alex right here on this play, man. Heavy, heavy hands. Understanding gap responsibility. Fighting pressure with pressure. And then go make a play. Slow it down for you as well. So you can see what I mean when I talk about fighting pressure with pressure. So right here, inside hands, right? He's to that steering wheel first. We talked about it. Great hand placement by him. He's very fundamental in that. That is what helps him out a ton, even if he's slow off the ball. Even if he's not necessarily sure what to do, his hand placement is always good. And right here, you see his glove inside of Austin Hooper's, you know, arm. That's what you want. But now, fighting pressure with pressure, you see him do what? Start to drive back this way. He doesn't go in here because it's the problem. If he just, you know, goes there right now, Austin Hooper is going to wash him down. This back is going to bubble. And now we're going to have Vince one-on-one -on -one with Nick Chubb. Could get a little dicey right there, right? But instead, he does this. He says, I'm going to push back this way. And why does he do that? Because it makes this back feel like, well, man, I'm going to have to cut this back or I'm going to have to stop because I can't get this ball outside here, okay? So now, fight pressure with pressure. Okay, Nick Chubb said, I can't get this ball outside. Tackle or uh, wherever this lineman is coming from. He's obviously pulling up in this hole. But Alex is like, man, I can go make this play. And that's what he does. Foot in the ground, get low, shoot your gun right here. Beautiful work. Love the legs still moving as well. This is big time right here, though, man. Like I said, it's all mentality. It's all want to. When it comes to playing the run, man... <laughs> A lot of times, that's as simple as it boils down to. You just wanting to make the play more than this guy wanting to block you. And for Alex, a lot of times, he's going to get these tight ends like this. Tight ends, man, we know what they are. They're bloated wide receivers. They want to get out there and run routes. They want to catch passes. Make them do the nasty stuff, though. And that's what Alex I. Smith did right here. If you don't want to do the uh, nasty stuff, well, we're going to get nasty on your running back, baby. But this is beautiful right here by Alex, man. Really good job. Just showing that he can play the run right here. Because that's what you have to be, right? We talked about if he's going to come in and do what Bud Dupree was able to do these past two years, you have to be able to be a complete player. You can't just rest the passer. You got to be dominant in the run game as well. But he's showing plenty of potential to do all of those things. The foundation, the groundwork is there. I'm excited to see him with the full offseason as well, how much he can grow and expand. Because, man... It's looking good right now. It's looking really good. All right, now this final play that we're going to talk about, once again, just shows Alex playing, you know, the run, being aggressive in the C gap. Now, this is from that uh, wild card Browns game. He only played, I think, 16 snaps in there because he got hurt early in that game, so we don't have a lot of tape on him. But when he was healthy and when he was doing what he's supposed to do, it looked really good. So, as you already know, this is Alex at the top. Okay. We'll play this thing in full speed, and after that, we'll break it down. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed already, we at the end of the video. Subscribe! <laughs> all righty, all righty. So for uh, Alex right here, man, obviously this is the base front again, once again, right? We talked about the three down D linemen. Got your one, two, three, four guys up here but right here man i love the pre-snap communication you see him talking to spillane after the motion 
and all he's basically communicating is just how they want to play it from a coverage standpoint. That's about it, man. He um, adjusts his alignment from a six technique, which was head up, to more of a nine technique, which is outside. But it's a little bit of a funky alignment just because you get this wing, you know, close proximity situation right here. Changes his alignment just a little bit. But his gap is still the same. It's going to be outside of the, the first tight end. So it'd be in between those guys, all right? I'm just showing you from the uh, outside just so you can get a bigger, broader picture of what it looks like. And then we'll deep dive a little bit more when we get to that end zone copy. But look at this right here. This is grown man. This is this is how you take a guy and rag dog him. I mean, you look at him. He's what? Like we talked about earlier. One to two yards in the backfield. Settles. He doesn't keep driving this guy back because Chubb would just go what? Go run inside and then get right back outside. But he gets his two yard depth and he settles. And then from there violence sheesh violence i love it super aggressive with the hands though man Shit, i gotta slow it back down i love the violence though on this let me get let me let's get this thing right because the violence that he plays with up front i love man right out the stance heavy hands i mean look at the contact he initiates he drives this guy back austin hooper is catching you got to be the hammer not the nail but right there man Gets rid of the blocker, then goes and makes the play. Like, this is this is what you want to see. This is how you play the run, man. Let me slow it down for you. Once again, out that. Uh... Oh, I thought it was Austin Hooper. It wasn't. It was, uh... I forgot this young guy's name. That's Njoku right there. But, man, really good job just being aggressive out of his stance, man. Like I say, six technique initially, right? Communicating off of the motion. Confidence, right? We talked about it. When he knows what he's doing, it could be very, very productive. Very productive confident knows what he's doing has a stance right because like i said this is his gap he has to get inside here now it's funky because of just their formation you got him on the line him off the ball him as a motion guy but his gap responsibility still stays the same all right and how do you get to that gap okay if this guy's reaching you that's one thing but knowing that he's going cut off you fight through this guy fighting pressure with pressure right outside here giving a little bit more uh when, when ADH trying to lean back on him, he's heavy on that hand. Now that he has that, that gap secured, he knows ball can't get outside. Chubb has to cut back, get off, make the play. Now, I would like for him to keep his legs going. You know, he kind of went for a ride right there. But shout out to Vince, man, coming through cleanup crew. But as a whole, man, really good play by uh, Alex Highsmith right here, man. And these are the things that he's more than capable of doing. Like I said, it's more so just the mentality. Doing it every single time. Getting that cardio up, right? We talked about a little bit, man. When you're playing the full game defensively, you will have times when you get winded. Got to get that cardio right where it needs to be. But when he knows what he's doing and he's confident in it, it shows up in a big way. Like I said, really good job by him on the play. Like I said, it was unfortunate he got hurt because I wanted to see more of him that game, man. Obviously, it was a big game, one of the bigger games in his career, man. His first playoff start, but... As a whole, like I said, man, I thought he did some really good things in his opportunities to start this year. And I definitely think that he's going to be able to help in a major way defensively, man, taking over if Bud is to leave in free agency like we're all anticipating that happening. So hope you all enjoyed this video. As always, man, in the comment section, let me know any other player you want to see. I got the videos coming just for y'all, baby. All right. And until next time, baby. Peace.